small, quiet, and long abandoned theatre that once hosted the most thrilling performances. However, the grandeur of its past glory had faded into the darkness of history. Locals whispered tales of eerie occurrences surrounding the theatre, and it was said that a malevolent force lurked within its crumbling walls. One foggy evening, a group of curious teenagers decided to explore the theatre, intrigued by its haunted reputation. Are you sure no one will see us? I really don't think anyone actually cares about this place. Armed with flashlights, they entered the theatre through its creaky double doors. Wow, look at all the gold details. I can't believe they'd ever shut this place down. I can. <laughs> the echo is so bad in here, it's giving me a headache. Inside, the theatre was a labyrinth of decaying corridors and dust-covered seats. The group ventured deeper, guided only by the dim light of their flashlights. As they moved through the darkness, the echoes of their footsteps seemed to be amplified, filling the theatre with an unsettling symphony. Reaching the centre of the stage, Mike noticed an old-fashioned radio emitting static and strange frequencies. Hey, what's that over there? What? On the stage. Oh, is that... a radio? It's on. Someone must have been here before us. Well, don't touch that. What? It's just a radio. Yeah, Mike, I'd be careful. Intrigued, he turned the dial, and the radio crackled to life, playing eerie music from a bygone era. The group exchanged nervous glances, but laughed it off, attributing spooky ambience to the theater's haunted reputation. As they continued their exploration, they stumbled upon an ancient dressing room, adorned with faded mirrors and dusty costumes. Wow. The costumes are still in here. Looks like no one's been in here, actually. What the hell? What happened? What's wrong? My... my face. The reflection in one of the mirrors caught Lisa's attention. Her eyes widened in shock as she saw her reflection age rapidly, her skin wrinkling and her hair graying, before returning to normal in an instant. It looks old. Better stock up on some of this uh, anti-aging miracle cream. Screw <laughs> off. I think you're just psyching yourself out. The others dismissed it as a trick of the mind. Their fear escalated as they discovered a strange photograph in a nearby drawer. Hey, that kind of looks like us. The photograph showed a group of people, eerily resembling themselves, standing in the exact same positions they were at that moment. The date on the back read 1923, a hundred years ago. Reality seemed to be merging with the past, and they couldn't explain what was happening. This place is giving me the creeps. I want to go. I want to What? Leave. No, we just got here. Why are you guys being such pavies about this? No, I think she actually has a point. We should go. Oh my god, fine. Let's go. Desperate to leave, the group rushed toward the exit, but every corridor they took led them back to the center of the theater. Panic set in as they realized they were trapped within the theater's inexplicable maze. Something caught Mike's eye about the photograph and took a closer look. On the back was another photograph. Mike carefully peeled the two photographs apart, revealing the image of a woman in a showgirl costume. In it, she stood proudly in her attire, holding a large bouquet of roses, while surrounded by a doting audience. She looks very popular. If you got that picture from there, then that means that this is actually her vanity. Out of curiosity, Taylor dug through the drawer and found more souvenirs of the time. More photographs, dried flowers, costume jewelry, and a note. Guys, there's a note. There's a note. Be careful with that. You open it slowly. I'm being careful, don't worry. What does it say? My dearest fans, oh, how delightful it must be for you to all witness my momentary descent from the glimmering heights of stardom. Alas, it seems that the world has grown weary of my dazzling brilliance and my mesmerizing performances. How dreadfully tragic that you've chosen to abandon me for lesser entertainments. But don't worry, my darlings. I have concocted a marvelous surprise for each and every one of you. A fitting tribute to the treachery that has befallen me. You have earned this everlasting experience of my artistry. Let it be a lesson in loyalty for abandoning a true and real star 
for the fleeting allure of mediocrity. May you forever be spellbound by my enchantments, and may your regretful sighs echo through the cursed theater for all eternity. Belovedly yours, Missy L. Marlowe. Am I just paranoid, or is that definitely a suicide note? Like, she wrote this before she, you know? Oh my god, I think you're right. Oh, yeah, I see that. They stood there, uneasy, with what they read, and began to realize something more sinister may have happened within the velvet-lined walls. The group's terror intensified as they realized they were bound to the showgirl's curse and were slowly becoming echoes of the theater themselves. Each step they took, each word they spoke, was amplified and absorbed by the theater's malevolence. They were becoming part of its haunting echo, never to escape. We're so freaking screwed, there's no way out. Everything is... I want to go home. There's, there's just no way. Guys, do you, do you see that up there? Holy shit. The showgirl appeared, hanging from the second balcony, swinging like the pendulum of a clock. Time became distorted, and the line between past and present blurred, trapping the teenagers in a nightmarish loop of echoes. There's no freaking... Someone's playing a horrible prank on us. This isn't, this isn't real. It can't be real. I should have never let you guys convince me to do this. You guys should have listened to me. I told you. I told you we shouldn't trespass. Well... Wait, there's a window here. I think we could break this. I'll give it a shot. Stand back. The theater was indestructible and was very unhappy with this decision. A haunting tune drowned the theater and it grew louder and louder. Delirium began to set into the minds of the teens as the haunted theater ate away at their psyche. to the teenager's plight continued to hear the haunted theater's chilling symphony from afar. The theater became a forbidden place and its legend grew with each passing year. The cursed building stood as a reminder of the horrifying events that had unfolded within its walls. And so, the haunting echo of the abandoned theater in Ashford endured, ensnaring unwary souls for eternity. The twilight zone it existed in kept its secrets hidden forever shrouding the truth in darkness.